everybody. Tony Pickard here, truck camping golfer. Uh, settling in for the night. It's dark out. It's still early. Thinking about my day tomorrow. Uh, I'm heading toward the Grand Canyon, which I hear is pretty big. Uh, should be a big deal, but I haven't even thought about that today. Today, as I get closer to it, I've been thinking more and more about this place I'm going to pass on the way. Uh, it's a monument for the Granite Mountain Hotshots, who uh, 16 of them died when a fire overcame them, a wildland fire uh, on Yarnell Hill. And I passed through Yarnell today. Uh, I'm going to stop at the, the uh, monument tomorrow. And it's got me thinking about Young Men in Fire. Uh, it's a book by John McClain, who uh, studied the 1949, it's like early smoke jumpers. They went out of a C-130 in Montana uh, and landed in, in a place called Man Gulch to, you know, help fight a fire that really wasn't threatening anything but the forest. You know, but that was before the days when we realized fire was good for the forest and the grasslands and everywhere it burns in the wild. Anyway, they uh, jumped out of their C-130 and uh, didn't know a lot about fire behavior. Nobody did, uh, except, you know, house fires and some grass fires uh, where you could get to on foot and in a fire truck back in those days. But these were big fires in the mountains uh, and uh, all but uh, there all but one of them died I think there was 13 and their leader Wagner Dodge Wag Dodge who saved himself by setting a fire and jumping into the middle of the black you know once it burned the grass he jumped in and the big fire went over him and none of the other firefighters would get in with him they thought he was nuts. They ran for the rocks on top of the hill, but the fire was going faster. And so it overtook them. Uh, it's fascinating. You know, I read the book, but I didn't know about the book until I was driving down the road about, what, 10 years ago in Anchorage, Alaska, and listened to the radio, and a song came on. And I'm like, this is an odd song. You know, it was on uh, public radio. And I'll play it. It's about that fire. And I had to look it up. I, had, I got the, the, the CD. Uh, and I, oh, this is about the fire. This is a big deal. And that's how I found out about the book and about fire. And I'm into fire behavior. And that's why I'm, I'm drawn to this uh, memorial t t uh, tomorrow. Because young men don't learn. Like in war, what's the song? When will they ever learn? Same with uh, young men in fire, you know. So this is the song. Uh, listen to the lyrics. It's it's pretty clear. You know, it's a folk song, so you can actually hear the lyrics. So here we go. Lightning strikes 
in the mountains. I was crew chief at the jump base. I prepared the boys to fly. Pick the drop zone. C-47 comes in low. Feel the tap upon your leg that tells you go. See the circle of the fire down below. Fifteen of us drop above the cold Missouri water. Gauge the fire. I'd seen bigger. So I ordered them to side hill and we'd fight it from below. We'd have our backs to the river. We'd have it lit by morning even if we took it slow. But the fire crown jumped the valley just ahead. There was no way down. Headed for the ridge instead. Too big to fight it. We'd have to fight that slope instead. Flames one step behind above the cold Missouri water. Sky had turned red. Smoke was boiling. Two hundred yards to safety, death was fifty yards behind. I don't know why, I just thought it. I struck a match to waste high grass, running out of time. Tried to tell them, step into this fire, I said, we can't make it. This is the only chance you'll get. But they cursed me. Ran for the rocks above instead. I lay face down and prayed above the cold Missouri water. And when I rose like the phoenix, in that world reduced to ashes, there were none but to survive. I stayed that night, and one day after, carried bodies to the Wonder how I stay alive. Thirteen stations of the cross to mark their fall. I've had my say. I'll confess to nothing more. I'll join them now because they left me long before. Thirteen crosses high above the cold Missouri water. Thirteen crosses high above the cold Missouri shore. Yeah, uh, the photo, photos that I showed you on this pamphlet were the uh, 16, not 13, the 16 Wildland firefighters that pretty much underestimated the uh, power of a Wildland fire and uh, mystery of it and suffered the same fate burned alive uh this one 10 years ago and that's where i'm going tomorrow uh these guys they were uh sitting safe up on a ridge that i saw today when i went by yarnell uh they were in the black the fire was picking up the winds had picked up and uh, elsewhere, every, everybody was busy, but they were in the black waiting for orders, sitting there, standing around. They don't like that. I get it. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, the uh, firefighting uh, communications people down on the road who were coordinating the other firefighters and 
they heard something come over, like a very staticky, and it was their uh, chief, Eric Marsh, I think his name is. Yeah, Eric Marsh, their uh, captain, their leader, uh, in distress. They had left the black, walked down toward Yarnell, toward a ranch house that was safe, that would be close to the fire where they could be of use, you know? So this is all in documentaries. It's been investigated. Nobody really knows why they moved. But my guess and, and other people who are experts, unlike me, uh, you know, say the same thing. They probably thought, they're they're made to fight fires. They're not made to stand around in the black while fought a fire. And plus, they're locals. You know, uh, there were a lot of firefighters brought in for this fire from other places, but this was like their own backyard, and they're not even there. So they left and uh, they walked into the fuel. Uh, there's no fire. The fire wasn't supposed to be there, and it wasn't. But they walked for a while, and this place, this ranch house, was further than they thought. And they walked so they couldn't see to their left, I believe it was. Uh, and a fire had jumped a mountain and got to their mountain and was racing. They couldn't even see. They kept walking. When they got past the blind spot, they saw the fire coming at them. Uh, and it had already overtaken the spot where they came from, so they couldn't retreat. And that's when he made his last call about uh, we're facing the flaming front, the last words. And he said it with a lot of emotion and then it went dead and they were, they were all burned, dead. Uh, and so there's a monument, you know. And there are people building houses and interfaces right now. California, of course, other places, deeper into the desert where it does burn. And... They may evacuate in time, but uh, what about the firefighters that go and fight their uh, their homes? You know, there's a growing uh, advocacy for the wildland firefighter. Why does he have to go and fight these fires when they're supposed to burn anyway? Like in Man Gulch, there was no reason to. There was nothing within miles, hundreds of miles in some in some directions of that fire. But all those men died uh, in this fire, Yarnell. Uh, actually, a couple houses did burn in Yarnell. Uh, nobody was hurt. Uh, so send these men in to fight a fire to threatening brick and mortar for some rich folks uh, who had no business really building their house there in the first place. Uh, the good news is the codes are getting stronger and the fire... The houses are becoming more fire resistant, but why not just uh, stay out of there and then don't build them fireproof? Probably won't. Too expensive. So you don't need uh, firefighters to go into those desolate areas. Uh, and this was one of them. Anyway, I hope you liked the song. Uh, I'm going to get to the uh, monument tomorrow. I'll have another final installment here and I hope you watch the documentaries on the Yarnell fire and the Granite Mountain hot shots also there was a Storm King fire I forget where that was uh, California I forget and men died there too another example and women women died there too and of course you can go research the Man Gulch fire uh, and read the book by John McClain. Uh, his son is still a, a, an advocate for firefighters. That's where I get my uh, motivation from because I've heard him speak. Now, I live in Alaska, you know. Uh, I live in the middle of the Chugach National Forest, which is going to burn, and I live on a slope, and I can feel those winds at night, you know. Uh, the, the currents start coming, and it, when it gets hot in the daytime, uh, it cools at night, and everything seems good. But when the wind shifts, and the wind shifted in all these fires unpredictably, most fires, most airplane crashes, 
big, where a lot of people get killed, uh, usually a series of events has to occur. And if one of those pieces don't doesn't occur, then the event doesn't occur. But every once in a while it does. The whole thing, you know, everything falls into place. The perfect storm, you heard of that. The perfect fire, the perfect air crash, whatever you want to call it. And it'll happen again. The people with the money usually control the politicians. And the real estate, big real estate has a lot of money. Uh, and they're going to keep pushing into these places. These firefighters are going to still keep going in because they're, you know, cannon fodder, they used to call people, uh, you know, in the Civil War. Send them out, see how the enemy's doing. Oh, killed them all. I guess we better not attack. Uh, it's not like that now, but these guys are still gung-ho, you know. They want to go fight fires, but it's up to us to protect them. Their wives might agree, the ones left behind, and their folks and their sons and daughters. It's enough out of me.